But many of our cleverest engineering solutions have exact counterparts in nature. For birds and planes, the hardest part of flying is landing or taking off. When a wing is moving slowly through the air, there's much less lift, making it harder to stay in the air. The engineering solution is to make the wing bigger by extending flaps at the rear. And nature does the same. A hunting barn owl flies slowly, listening for the slightest noise in the grass that might reveal the location of a mouse. In slow flight, its feathers are spread out to give it maximum lift. A bird can change the shape of its wing far more dramatically than a plane, giving the barn owl its ability to hang in the air until it pinpoints its target. These striking parallels between nature and technology meant that during the whole century of aviation, engineers spent a lot of time reinventing the wheel, or at least the wing. Now, with the birth of this new way of thinking, of bio-inspired thinking, engineers are looking to nature when designing the next generation of aircraft. These robo-gulls at Florida State University are radio-controlled models with wings that behave more like those of birds. These planes can change the way they fly, just like birds making them much more adaptable than conventional planes. This one changes the area of its wings, in the same way as a bird does, by sliding its feathers apart. Birds can also alter the angle of their wrist joints to change their flight characteristics. And so can this plane. With its wings in the wrist-down position, the plane is less stable but very maneuverable. With its wings straight, the plane glides well and with the wrists up, it's more controllable and easy to land. This plane is steered by wing warping, a system abandoned by engineers shortly after the Wright brothers, because although very efficient, it needs constant adjustments and instantaneous reactions. All these planes fly, but because they behave like birds, they're very difficult to control. Evolution has turned the bird's brain into an ultra-fast control system. An onboard computer capable of making continuous, lightning-fast adjustments to wing shape and angle. Just how fast a goshawk's reactions need to be can only be seen when its dash through the trees is filmed from an onboard camera. The researchers from Florida State University really appreciated the goshawk's instinctive skill when they tried flying their robo-gulls by remote control. It took a lot of practice to keep these things in the air. But once mastered, these little planes are highly maneuverable. Technical University of Berlin, scientists are using a specially designed wind tunnel to study a different aspect of bird flight. Attached to the front of this wind tunnel is another innovative design by natural selection, a stork's wing. The long, finger-like primary feathers are spread and turned upwards in flight, 
This reduces the amount of drag, which would otherwise slow the bird down. For birds like storks and vultures, a wing with low drag is critical. It gives them a much better performance as gliders. We've invented a similar trick. Upturned winglets on the end of the wings of modern aircraft serve the same purpose, reducing drag created by vortices spinning off the wing tips. But nature's system is more adaptable. It's automatic. As the airflow increases over the wing, the primaries bend up into just the right position. And multiple winglets are more effective. Using a series of models of a stork's wing, the scientists here worked out the best arrangement of multiple winglets. Then they went a step further than nature. They took away the individual feathers, just leaving a loop at the end of the wing. By extending this idea even further, the scientists made this model, where the whole wing is a loop allowing the plane to fly at walking speed. The real joy of bio-inspired thinking is not always in the obvious, but in the leap to new and unexpected ideas. By understanding the way a stork's primaries work, these scientists have designed a way to make more efficient wind turbines. Based on the design of the stork's wing feathers, they arranged veins in a circle. As they shed their vortices into the center, the veins increase the airflow here. So when a windmill is pulled back into the center of this structure, it picks up speed. Inspiration for new ideas can come from anywhere. There are more than enough ideas just around the house and garden to keep a scientist busy for a whole career. Take the humble fly, for example. It might hold the secrets to new kinds of spy vehicles or search and rescue equipment. To most of us, it's just a germ-carrying nuisance. But look again. It can do things no engineer can. Until a few years ago, scientists had no idea how flies flew, let alone how to copy them. But now the fly's secrets are being unraveled, and it needed a whole new branch of aerodynamics to understand it. Deep in the basement of Caltech, the California Institute of Technology, there's a fruit fly with a half-meter wingspan, a working model submerged in hundreds of liters of oil. The oil behaves like air would over the tiny real fly. Injecting air bubbles into the oil shows the scientists what happens as the insect flaps its wings. An exact replica of the real thing, but at a scale which makes it easier to study. The wing creates spinning masses of air around it. Some of these vortices spin off beneath the wing, producing some lift. But the scientists noticed that one vortex stays attached, just behind the front edge of the wing. And it turns out that this leading edge vortex is vitally important in allowing the fly to fly. This is what generates most of the lift.